Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Kitty Pasta, and we are celebrating 10 years on YouTube. Tonight's story, as all of you probably figured, I would have to do at least one of these haunted video game stories. But Pokemon Black, out of all of the Pokemon stories, or all of the haunted video game stories, I wouldn't say is the best one, but it was absolutely the first one that I had ever seen. Um, once again, just like Tulpa, this is one that I saw well before I became MCP, and one that I had not considered ever bringing up on the channel, because originally I had done stories that I had found at creepypasta.com, but this one was actually sent to me by a friend, because it was on a image of a Facebook post, and the friend believed that Pokemon Black was real, <laughs> and thought it was good for me to record something like this and talk about something that was a real haunted game. And I believe now you actually can find hacks or fan-made versions of Pokemon Black because at the root of it, it's not a story that feels like if you play this game, you die in real life. It's just a game that has a very, very dark overtone. So, tonight's story is Pokemon Black version by an unknown anonymous author. I'm what you call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games. Uh, Pokemon Diamond and Jade, uh, Chaos Black, etc. It's amazing the frequency with which you can find them at pawn shops, at Goodwill, at flea markets and such. They're generally fun. Even if they're unplayable, which they often are. The mistranslations, the poor quality, it makes them unintentionally humorous. I've been able to find more of the ones that I've been playing online, but there's one that I haven't seen any mention of. I bought it at a flea market about five years ago. And here's a picture of the cartridge. In case anyone recognizes it, that is. But unfortunately, when I moved two years ago, I lost the game. So, I can't provide you with the screen caps. I'm sorry about that. The game started with the familiar Nidorino and Gengar into the red and blue versions. However, the press start screen had been altered. You see, red was there. But the Pokemon did not cycle through. It also said black version under the Pokemon logo. Upon seeing New Game, the game starts with the Professor Oak speech, and it quickly becomes evident that the game was essentially Pokemon Red version. After selecting your starter, if you looked at your Pokemon, you'd have, in addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, another Pokemon. Ghost. The Pokemon was level 1. It had the sprite of the ghost that was encountered in Lavender Town before obtaining the Sylph Scope. It had one attack. Curse. I know there was a real move named Curse, but the attack did not exist in Generation 1, so it appears that it must have been hacked in. Defending Pokemon were unable to attack Ghost. It would only say they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in battle, the screen would cut to black. The cry of the defending Pokemon would be heard, but it was distorted, played at a much lower pitch than normal. The battle screen would then reappear, and the defending Pokemon would be gone. If used in battle against a trainer, when the Pokeballs representing their Pokemon would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokeball. The implication was that the Pokemon had died. What's even stranger is that after defeating a trainer and seeing Red receive $200 for winning, the battle commands would appear again. If you selected Run, the battle would end as it normally does. You could always select Curse, and if you did, Upon returning to the overworld, the trainer's sprite would be gone. After leaving and re-entering the area, the spot where the trainer had been would be replaced with a tombstone, similar to the ones at Lavender Town. The move Curse was not usable in all instances. It would fail against ghost-type Pokemon. It would also fail if it was used against trainers that you would have to face again, such as your rival or Giovanni. It was usable in your final battle against them, however. I figured this was the gimmick of the game, allowing you to use the previously uncaptured ghosts, and because Curse made the gameplay so easy, I essentially used it throughout the whole adventure. The game changed quite a bit after defeating the Elite Four, though. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of Ghost and a couple of Pokemon I used for HMs, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words, Many years later. It then cut to Lavender Town. An old man was standing looking at tombstones. You then realize this man was your character. The man moved at only about half your normal walking speed. You no longer had any Pokemon with you, not even Ghost. 
who up to this point had been impossible to remove from your party through depositing in the PC. The overworld was entirely empty. There were no people at all. There were still the tombstones of the trainers that you used curse on, however. You could go pretty much anywhere in the overworld at this point, though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no Pokemon to use HMs, and regardless of where you went, the music of Lavender Town continued in an infinite loop. After wandering for a while, I found that if you go to Diglett's Cave, one of the cuttable bushes that normally blocks the path on the other side is no longer there, allowing you to advance and return to Pallet Town. Upon entering your house and going to the exact tile where you start the game, the screen would cut to black. And then a sprite of a Caterpie appears. It was then replaced by a Weedle, then a Pidgey. And I soon realized, as the Pokemon progressed from Radita to Blastoise, that these were all of the Pokemon that I had used Curse on. After the end of my rival's team, a youngster appeared, then a bug catcher. And these were the trainers that I had cursed. Throughout the sequence, the Lavender Town music was playing, but it was slowly decreasing in pitch. And by the time your rival appears on screen, it was more like a demonic rumble. Another cut to black. A few moments later, the battle screen suddenly appears, and your trainer sprite was now that of an old man, the same as the one who teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghost appears on the other side, along with the words, Ghost wants to fight. You couldn't use items. You had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The only option was fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect Ghost, but did chip off a bit of your own HP. When it was Ghost's turn to attack, it would simply say, dot dot dot. Eventually, when your HP reached a critical point, Ghost would finally use Curse. Screen cut to black one final time. And regardless of what buttons you press, you're permanently stuck in the black screen. At this point, the only thing you could do was to turn the Game Boy off. When you played again, new game was the only option. The game would erase itself. I played through the hack game many, many times, and every time the game ended with this sequence. Several times, I didn't use Ghost at all, though he was impossible to remove from the party. In these cases, it didn't show any Pokemon or trainers, and simply cut to the climactic battle with Ghost. I'm not sure what the motives were behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so it was presumably not for any monetary gain. It was very well done for a bootleg. Seems he was trying to convey a message, though it seems I'm the sole receiver of this message. I'm entirely sure what it was, the inevitability of death. The pointlessness of it all. Perhaps he was simply trying to inject morbid death and darkness into a children's game. But regardless, this children's game has made me think. And it's made me cry. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and we've just started off 2021, hopefully pretty well here. It's been 10 years now since the channel's gotten started, and since then, man, we've kind of done a shit ton. If you'd like to check out more of what I've done, you can always follow me at twitch.tv slash Mr. Creepypasta to hear me recording live and where I talk kind of at length about myself and my life. And I want to give a very special thank you to all of you who support me on Patreon because quite honestly, you guys helped me keep the lights out of my house. And I can't thank you enough for that. A very special thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Chumbinski, Bobby Carmen, Nico Kyle, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Deanna Krause, G Weevil 3, Chris Lovin, Freddy Krueger, Dr. Stein and Mr. Happy, Miranda Jeffries, Hul Gungshi, Justin Johnson, Raven Hart, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Kazen, this is my real name, no shit, Jason VB Wilson, Infernal One, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Jordan Wayne Deckard, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Someone You Love, S Man, Kiri the Sloth, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much. 
like, seriously, thank you guys so, so much. And if you would like to be able to join them, you always can at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. I love you guys. Seriously. All of you who support on Patreon, who follow, who subscribe, those of you who listen, and those of you who lurk, thank you for the amazing 10 years and sweet dreams. <laughs>